Okay, in this video we're going to show you how to hook up your lab scope to get a voltage and current waveform from your fuel injectors. This is for a port fuel injection system. It has traditional injectors that run 12 volts. And you'll see here that if we look at the wiring, I can see three of the injectors. It has a white and maybe an orange wire on this injector here. We have a white and blue wire on this injector and a white and red wire on this injector. We had to cut back this, this cover just a little bit to access this, but because they all have a white wire, we can assume that that's the power wire. Most injectors have power all the time and then are grounded by a low side driver in the PCM on the ground side. So what we want to do is probe with our T-pins. We'll probe into the ground side, which is the red wire. And we're gonna probe, back probe in until we can touch the terminal. And then we want to measure current as well. So we're going to bring the amp clamp around and place it, of course, orient the amp clamp correctly. If not, you'll get a, a reverse waveform. Place it over one of the two wires. It doesn't matter which one. Just make sure that you can clamp, clamp fully over the wire and turn on, the, turn on the amp clamp and zero it. And then we'll place our red lead or positive lead to the lab scope right here on the T-pin and the negative lead would go on the battery negative cable for ground. That's how you'd set it up so we can capture both voltage and current and we'll take a look at the waveform in just a minute. Okay, now that we have a waveform, let's take a look at okay. channel A, we have voltage. This is measured on the ground side of the injector. And on channel B, we have current. And this was measured from the amp clamp that was placed around the wire leading to the injector. And you'll see that the car idled for a little while. We can see the frequency of the injector here and then it was revved up and it decelerated where it actually cut the injectors out for a, a brief period of time. And then it idled again right here. So let's zoom in to look at one of these injector pulses to see what it looks like. You'll notice that on channel A that it starts out here at about 14.7 volts, which is normal for charging system voltage while the car is running. And then I've got this ruler here, but it pulls down to ground when the injector is turned on. Then when it shuts back off, we get a spike up here at about 115 volts. That's the inductive kick that's caused by the collapsing magnetic field around the coil inside the injector. And because of that, you'll always want to make sure and set your range on the vertical scale so that it can capture that spike. You'll also want to make sure that your lab scope is capable of measuring up to possibly 150 to 200 volts. If it's not, you'll want to use an attenuator on that channel to protect your lab scope. Okay, so we can start out by measuring the pulse width of the injector. We know that's measured in milliseconds, and we can come over here and say, well, this is when the injector turned on. Grab a second ruler and put it right here. And that's when the injector was turned off. It was on at this point for 4.116 milliseconds. Now that tells us the basically the, the condition of the circuit. This is a voltage drop test right here. It was 12 volts and it dropped to zero. So We've got, we've got a great circuit. If there's an electrical problem, it'll show up here. If there's a short in the windings, it'll show up in the current. You can see that the amount of current, grab this ruler for the red channel here, you can see that the current is roughly one amp, and that's because the resistance inside of a typical injector is about 13 or 14 ohms. So you should see one amp if there was a short circuit in the injector or an electrical problem that would also show up here. Now one of the best things you can do with fuel injectors, if you're not sure if this looks right or not, is to compare this injector to another injector on that same vehicle. If you have a problem in one cylinder, you can compare the good cylinder to the bad to see if there's anything that's different. So the things that we can check for here, if we want to see if this injector is working well, are the actual open time. So it was on for 4.11 milliseconds, but it didn't actually open until right here on the red channel in the current ramp, you'll see a little dip right here. So there's a delay from the time that it turned on to the time that it actually physically opened. And that's normal. We want to check that delay. The more that the injector becomes dirty or clogged, that delay could increase. And then when the injector shut off right here, but it actually physically closed right 
here, you notice there's a bump right here on the voltage waveform, and that represents the pin tool in the injector slamming closed again. So it was actually open for 3.57 milliseconds. So if you wanted to do some quick math, you could divide the open time, which is 3.357 milliseconds, by the on time, which is 4.1 milliseconds, to get a percentage of open time compared to on time, which can basically help you determine if the injector is opening or closing properly. So if you want to look at the physical condition of the injector, we're going to look at open time compared to on time. If you want to look at the electrical condition of the injector, you're going to look at the voltage and current waveforms. And that's basically what you can tell with the lab scope when testing an injector. Again, I'd recommend comparing this injector to another injector on the same vehicle to be able to know if you have something wrong with your injector. Now, I've done tests in the past where we have found the percentage of open time compared to on time, and then cleaned the injectors, and then checked again. We've actually seen this time increase. And so this is another way that you can tell whether those injectors are opening properly to allow the fuel to flow through them. Anyway, I hope that helps and gives you some things that you can do with your lab scope to check your fuel injectors.